What's up everybody? Welcome back to FNG Academy. I just had a quick announcement. I'm proud to say that we've been helping people get selected for three years now. I've been getting a lot of messages about uh, people thanking us and saying that they just graduated from uh, selection and they got selected. Uh, people graduating the Q course. Uh, one of my buddies just sent me a video uh, from the Charlie committee. Yes. If you guys have ever heard of the FNG Academy, raise your hands and all their hands went up and it just filled me with pride. Um, so part of the way that we do that is making sure that you guys are physically fit and ready for selection. And the way we've been doing that for the past couple years is by sending you to a Green Beret we know and trust, Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. So if you want to get selected, you need to be in the best shape possible and you need a programmer who knows what they're talking about. So go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK to get a discount. Tell him we sent you and hook you up. Congrats to everyone who's been getting selected lately and we'll see you guys on the next one. What's up guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. On this episode, we're doing a pretty badass movie. I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was awesome. Uh, in honor of Kurt and Abel making it home safely from their trip to Brazil, to Formula One. Where were you guys go? Brazil. 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 Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. All right, so they made it back, which is pretty awesome because I thought a bunch of little kids were going to come up and stab them in the streets and take their phones. Because my wife is Peruvian and she says that the kids come up and they'll stab you in the streets and take your phones. We were in a nice area. Nice. Yeah. Except for when you tried to get food that one time. Yeah. Uh, Kurt did take us into the uh, the heart of Brazil, I would say. The, the heart of Sao Paulo. The favelas? Not necessarily, but it was kind of an industrial area and it was pretty it was pretty suspect. It was not I did not at any point in time feel safe when we were sitting. <laughs> it was so bad that Kurt apologized profusely. It did he? <laughs> during and after for taking Which, me there. If you know Kurt, he doesn't apologize very often. No, he that. doesn't, not at all. But he dropped us <laughs> into a fucking war zone and just looked around and he was just like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I was like, you should be. We Bro, need I don't know if we're gonna make it out of here. So Elite Squad or Trope de Elite, check it out. Like this movie is really damn good. And uh, it's about uh, special operations police op police force within uh, the Brazilian uh, police department. Nice. So they just go after gangsters, and it's it's a it's a hit squad. I mean, they just straight up go after. They go into the worst areas where they know everyone has guns, and they just murk them. Let's jump into this episode though, because I'm telling you guys that this is a banger. Like, there's a selection scene for their unit. And it's sick, dude. It makes me want to go to it. It's like so legit. É 100% Catuera. Caveira, meu capitão. Então senta o dedo nessa porra. Pra mim, quem ajuda a traficante a se armar também é inimigo. Instantly, the first scene you get that's a tactical is you have a sniper and he's shooting police officers. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's so much, uh, according to this movie, and in this movie, there's so much corruption, and there, there's so many law enforcement involved in, in drugs and drug trafficking and all this stuff, and the, that the it's really, being a cop doesn't really matter. It's just good cops versus drugs. Mm -hmm. And drugs includes bad cops, bad politicians, gangbangers, everyone. Yeah. There's just non-drugs and drugs, right. and that's the war. And it doesn't matter if you wear a uniform. It doesn't matter what your position in life is. You're either on the drug side or the non-drug side. Yeah. And so that's crazy. They're openly killing other police officers without remorse, without even worrying about it. Oh, you're dirty. You're dead. Boom. Damn. And it's just like another day. Go home, kiss the wife, go to sleep. <laughs> like, bro. Kill you, the cop. You just killed one of the guys in your precinct and you're just going home and sleeping it off. Like, mm, comfy tonight. That's funny. Wagner is a pretty common Brazilian name. Wagner guy, he's been in a lot of movies too. Like he's been in a lot of stuff. Oh, has he really? Like a lot of really good movies. Damn, I can't believe his. Like... Capitão Nascimento. Oh, is that his real name? No, it's just his position in the movie. Oh. Looks like Captain Nascimento. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But dude, if you yeah, if you look him up, I thought he looked familiar. Oh, he was in Narcos, the in the oh, Mexican wow. Narcos. Um, he's been in some really good shit. Choking? Panic attack. That's what I mean, like choking in the position, like as in. Oh, yeah, just with, a little with, bit. With what he, he needs to do. Yeah, he gets through it, though. Oh, 
Oh, we did get him. So I'm saying this is like no questions asked, just game just, on. Just killing people? Yeah, because like most people, even though they have weapons, it's weapons down, you're still going to pop up and say, put it down. Right. So you give them some kind of chance. These guys, it's zero chance. You got a gun, you're a narco, you're dead, son. Damn. So they just instantly pop up, boom, 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 boom. And then uh, the captain's having uh, a bit of a panic attack. It, obviously, right? He's in this, he's just, he's in combat day in and day out. Yeah. And then now he's about to have a kid, which is a transition that most special operations guys will go through at some point if you stay in that high risk environment f- long enough. Um, I kind of traded mine in for the police department. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I kind of, I can associate with this. And in Denver, dude, like I was getting, I was, so many of my classmates have been shot, stabbed. Uh, gunfights were happening all the time. Like, you think police department is, like, safer than special operations? Hell no. <laughs> like, I was in just as many gunfights as a cop. Not not me shooting, but, like, gunfights are happening around the precinct all the time. Right. Like, oh, hey, did you hear so-and-so got into a, He got shot at this morning, got shot in the ankle. Like, what? And then starting shift and be like, hey, we got officers involved in a shooting right now and, like, gunning down to go, you know, get into it with them. Mm -hmm. That stuff was happening all the time in Denver. Um, So you have this transition where all of a sudden you're not as high risk anymore. Like you're not okay with that risk level because a a major life change, like having a kid or something like that. And now all of a sudden you start to think about your own safety more. Yeah. And then everything changes. Your mindset, your thought process, you're like, okay, let's evaluate why we're doing this and, and make sure that it's worth it because I'm not just this young buck anymore that just wants to get in it just for the sake of getting in it. Yeah. So you could see like he starts having panic attacks when he's like deciding whether or not this is the lifestyle he still wants to live. When it's third world country, like shit's really on the line like this, and you're in this combat every day, the rules of engagement get looser and looser and looser. Yeah. To the point where it's like, you're either a criminal with the badge or you're a criminal without the badge. Mm-hmm. But both of us are are bleeding those lines yeah. constantly. Like you get a kid and you're just willing to torture them. You you know, they're putting bags over people's heads and suffocating them to get the answers that they want. Yeah. There's no rules. It's it's a war. It's a war against each other. Drugs versus no drugs. That's the only thing that matters. Anything else is like an excuse to get what you need. Neto tinha polícia no coração, mas era um cara afobado. E nego afobado em favela, parceiro. Faz merda. Corre, 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 corre. Oh. Dude, what a mess, wow. bro. So the guy up top in the kill squad shoots him. No, so they're, they're not in the kill squad yet. Oh, they're okay. just a, they're two cops that, like, they did something dirty, and the guy that they communicated with was about to get murdered by the police. Mm. So they felt like they needed to, like, protect him because they're the ones that got him into it. Okay. So they go up and provide overwatch because the guy was like, hey, they're going to kill me. And then decides to shoot one of them because I think he shoots the gangster because he was going for, he has his hand on the gun. But then the gangster starts shooting at the cops. The cop jumps over the thing and starts shooting at the cops. And the cops are shooting at the gangsters and the cop. (laughs) So it's literally just everybody trying to kill each other. Like it's just no sense is being made of all of it when it's like every, anyone could be the bad guy. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they're in uniform, it doesn't matter if they're drug dealers. It's just like, whose side are you on right this second? Yeah.
that element just moves <clears throat> like a SF element. Like they're just flowy, speed, mm-hmm. violence of action. Let's just go. Like don't give them a chance to to either question because most of the time, what's happening is when there's shootouts, the narcos take a stand, start shooting. The cops take a stand, start shooting. There's a standoff. Right. So in order to break that barrier, you don't ever let there be a, a, a stall in the movements. Right. And w- that allows you to always have that surprise to where they're trying to take a moment to like collect themselves and you don't give it to them. You you move in and just start shooting. And now they have to think on their feet. They make mistakes. They try to run away. And you win the gunfights the majority of the time just by being hyper, hyper aggressive. Right. As to where the, the like, because, uh, which is something we learned from Tyler Gray is like, when people are put in these situations, what you don't account for is their desire to live. Right. So that causes them a lot of times to, you know, try to run away, hide, you know, like, the, yes, they want to fight, but they also want to fight knowing that they have a high chance of surviving. Right. So then you could start to um, kind of predict their movement and predict their habits based on how aggressive you are and pushing the rat down the maze. Yeah. So, and that's what this unit does, and it's pretty badass. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I love that scene, dude. So he has to stay there with it, just holding it for like the rest of the night? So essentially what they're they're trying to put him through is sleep deprivation. Uh-huh. So obviously they're tired, they haven't slept. And now they force him to sit down and take notes while he says strategy in like every language. So he's just saying the most boring things possible wow. and making them take notes about everything they said because obviously they're going to be tested on it later. Yeah. And anybody in that moment, is just, they're all going to be just fighting with every ounce of energy to not nod off. So then when they finally have somebody that does – now you have an opportunity to take that train to the next level Oof. and hand him a live grenade and pull the pin. So if he falls asleep, he's killing everyone. Can't be a live grenade though, right? Sure it can. Why not? Would you fall asleep with a live grenade in your hand? Would you would you put it on somebody to not fall asleep to live? As an instructor? In, in obviously as an American instructor, no. But in a third world country, in a place where I could do anything I want and get away with it, yeah, to an extent, I will fucking. I'm just saying, I, I still don't want to fuck myself up, right? That and you're gonna hold that grenade. But what am I doing by doing that? I'm doing more than just risking getting blown up, right? If I hand you that grenade and pull the pin, I'm doing so many things at the same time. One, I'm proving to everybody that I have no limits, right? I will do anything to you. So now I'm really making you afraid of me. If you think I have rules, I lose. Right. Because now you think he'll take me to this line and he won't cross it. Right. In in our seer school, they have us walk around uh, like a, it's like a ten foot tall wall with fucking um, uh, what are those rebar? Uh huh. Was it rebar? I mean, like the big yeah, that the goes long in bars that go yeah. in concrete sticking out of like nasty water so if you fall on that like you're gonna die so they're proving to you in seer school it's the same tactic that the limits that you think exist don't exist so then fear has the opportunity to really take over and now you get to see who the real tough mentally people are okay so you're you're doing that to everybody in that that process by giving them a live grenade and letting them know like you think i have rules right you think i have limits now you know that's not true so now you're always going to wonder how far it can go, and that makes things way more difficult in the selection process. And two, I'm team building because now everyone in that circle has to trust that that guy's going to have their back and not let go of that grenade and fall asleep. Yeah. And so now when we walk away from this and I say throw that grenade in the field and let's fucking move on, yeah. you throw the grenade, everyone looks at you and goes, whew. 
<laughs> <laughs> including the fucking instructor guy. Including the instructor. Now imagine us in a foxhole together. We're getting shot at. You've held a grenade for me mm -hmm. and potentially could have killed me already. Yeah. We're bonded in a way that you can, you're almost never going to get outside of uh, something seriously uh, as serious as your life on the line. Yeah. And you've done that, simulated that in training, which is insane. So, yes, it's crazy. But is it effective? You better fucking believe it. That's a pretty cool scene. Yeah. This is their final part of selection. And it's going into the slum and getting into a gunfight. <laughs> <laughs> it was me and Kurt. <laughs> we were in selection. Policial do Bop não é de favela atirando. Olha pra frente, fecha a cara, é cara de mal mesmo. Entra com estratégia. Pro grid de beco em beco. Olha aqui pra mim, olha aqui pra mim. Agora é devagar, quero ver. É devagar, com calma. Vai chegar com calma, o que você vai fazer aí? Com calma, vai olhar antes. Olhou, fatiou, passou. Boa, 06, boa, garoto. É isso aí, fatiou. All right, so that's their CQB training. Uh -huh. um, so it's just getting CQB tactics down and movement down. And what we have, we call it the catwalk, but it's just a, a way for the instructors to walk over us and see everything. They're just using connexes, which is a really good idea. To uh, In Afghanistan, we use connexes to train the Afghans. But oh, okay. we would flow with them because that's how we were going to be in combat okay. instead of walking on top and using it as a catwalk. But it's just a mixture of both. So they're just walking on top. So, But now they go into their final exercise, which is to go get into a gunfight. And it's that easy. It's like no matter what's going to yeah, happen. Yeah. You could just, you know, they know where to go to get into it. It's literally like living in Afghanistan <clears throat> and knowing which valleys, if you go into, you're going to have to fight your way back out of it. What is that? Slum, I guess. Like... Nas condutas de patrulha, eu não admitia eu. Homem com farda preta entra na favela para matar, nunca para morrer. Quem fosse me substituir tinha que saber disso. Isn't that wild? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> They're just going in and like, all right, if you want to graduate, Live. don't die. Yeah. yeah. And then that's what he has to do. And then this fucking gung ho little jackrabbit just decides to take off on his own and ignore like one of this like senior officers who's got just an immense amount of combat experience mm -hmm. day in and day out and he's like come back and you're like no eh. <laughs> like dumbass okay you're lucky you didn't get shot in the face uh but yeah it's just insane it's this movie's so cool dude <laughs> i love it dude. that's crazy nuts <laughs> Oof. Oh. Bro, to get information, they're willing to do anything, dude. You just shot him you in the legs. Shot him twice. two times. Yeah, so permanent damage. Yeah, like if he lives. Yeah. Does it doesn't look like there's very good hospitals in the favelas. Nope. So this guy's probably gonna bleed out to those gunshots. Yeah. But and, I mean it's effective because if they're willing to shoot you in the legs, they're willing to kill they're you. They're willing to kill you. And so who are you more afraid of in that moment? Yeah, you could be afraid of the gangsters, but the gangsters aren't there right now. They are. Yeah. So it, it's just crazy to see like if you're willing to be as violent as the gangs, yeah. Shit happens a lot quicker. Absolutely. And it's I imagine the gangs are just terrified of these guys. Right. Well, they talk about that all the time with like cartels versus uh, like the U.S. Army. You know what I mean? Which I mean, you talk about the ruthlessness of a cartel versus the manpower of an army. It's like who's willing to do Commit. the you know who's willing to do the crazier shit yeah. is really essentially going to win because you can't just blow everybody up. Right. Yeah. If you if you have too many rules, you're too restricted. And as long as I I could operate within those rules and just play you. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to kidnap a cartel son and decapitate him, right. right? They are more than willing to take Americans' children and family and just make a video. Yeah. 
So in in Brazil, I like and I don't know how accurate this movie is, but I imagine I imagine it's pretty accurate. It's like they're willing to meet violence with violence. We were in some bad spots, bro. No, it didn't look like that. It wasn't like crumbling bricks and yeah. and it wasn't that bad. But it's there somewhere. I'm sure. Yeah. I, I mean, don't... we have it in the U.S. Like there's places in in Detroit that are just so run down and disgusting that most people wouldn't even think it's the United States. Yeah. And like <laughs> there's. There's places in America where homes are for sale for like $2,000 and nobody will buy them. That's crazy. Because they're just full of meth heads and run down and you would have to like wipe the whole place and then you would have to live on that street. With <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you can't even give away homes. It's in all certain... 1500 bro. Just take it. Yeah. So they're... You can't even give away homes in certain parts of the U.S. So imagine... In uh, other countries. Deixado alguém indigno no meu lugar. Passa que é teu. Ah, na cara não. So that was the guy that killed uh, his partner. And so they went through all that to kill him. The part the part that's hard about this to watch is the part right before this where they start whooping civilians' asses just mm -hmm. to get in information. Uh -huh. And it's like it's easy when you, like, put a gun in the guy's hand and you call him a, a narco and you know that he's part of the gangs. And then it's, like, it's easy to digest. Yeah. But the minute they really want information – they're willing to turn it up on civilians. Yeah. And that's when it's like, all right, now you've crossed some moral boundaries that even I can't get on board with. Yeah. But when you are in the, the position to be like, the only thing that matters is the end result, mm -hmm. the ends justify the means, and you're willing to do pretty despicable things. Well, especially when you have that uh, that mentality of everybody around you, including an instructor, where you're supposed to do it, mm -hmm. right? So you're, you're in order to fit in, you have to do it or leave. There's no in between. You can't right. just like not do it. So that has, that's going to be at play too, just like anything else. Yeah. And humans are, are super predictable. Like we're, we're going to form to that. Yeah. It's, a, it's almost a guarantee. It's like the studies have been done from like Nazi guards and, and doing atrocities yeah. in Nazi Germany that's like, you're not going to stand up and say no because you're you're not just faced with like being a normal person and then all of a sudden like kill this innocent human being that would be too obvious yeah. that's a a clear distinction so instead they gradually add a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more until the point where it's like kill this innocent person doesn't feel like a big jump from the last thing that you did yeah they incrementally get you up to that point to that's where it's smart. it's almost normalized and that's that's why you know it, it, people are willing anybody would commit atrocities just given the right circumstances the right manipulation um and a good solid plan yeah. on the part of someone with authority and power sure so anyway that movie is pretty badass yeah it's it. sick it's sick that's dude. sick those scenes are sick so hope you guys enjoy that episode thank you guys for recommending this we've been the only reason I found this was because of you. I would have never seen this movie if it wasn't for the comment section. So make sure you're commenting down below. What did you think of this movie? What do you want us to see next? Um, and add it to the list. When you guys leave the comments, I add it to my little list. And we end up hitting all of them. It may take a while, but we hit them all. So what do you guys want to see next? What did you think of that movie? And is this the first time you've seen it? Um, and if you haven't seen it, let us know what you think once you go watch it. All right, guys. Check out the Patreon forward slash fngacademy.com um, or FNG Academy Team Room. You can Google and support the channel. We really appreciate it. We'll catch you guys on the next one. See you guys later. Peace.